Okay, we're back, and we're doing some electrostatics, and kind of a strange Gauss's law problem. Uh, this is going to be one where, um, similar to a, another video I have, where you you have a uniformly charged insulating material, okay, uniform charge density, and you, you drill a hole or drill a tunnel in the thing and drop an electron in, it'll oscillate. But now, I wanted to show an example where you have a non-uniform charge density and say a, a sphere. Okay, it's an insulated material. You drill a tunnel through it and you you drop a charged particle into it. What's going to happen to that particle? Let's say an electron. Uh, this is something that's analogous to a, a classic mechanics problem in gravity, where if you drill a hole in a, a like the Earth in some kind of planet, uh, a tunnel all the way through and you jump in, what would happen to you? Okay, it's similar to that kind of problem. So here's kind of the situation that we have, and we have two questions we want to try to answer. Uh, first, what will happen to the electron? What's the force it experiences? What's the general motion that might happen? And then uh, also, just for kicks, let's try to figure out um, the speed at a certain location. Okay, so what we have here is, um, is a Gauss's problem. There's a tunnel being drilled through this, this sphere. It has a a radius, big R, uh, a total charge Q. So Gauss's law would, we treat this the same way as we always would. If you're outside this object out here and you see the total charge, then it it's the classic point charge result. If we solve for the field, it's going to be charge of, over 4 pi epsilon R squared. Okay, um, No big deal. But we're interested in what happens inside if you if you have this tunnel. So to do Gauss's law, of course we, we need to figure out what to plug in for the charge as we, we go into this material. Okay, so this imagine this little shaded region here. That's our, our Gaussian surface. Um, it has a radius a little r. With non-uniform densities and I just kind of made this up just to have something. You can make up any function you want if you want to practice this. Uh, we want to figure out how much charge is inside that shaded region, okay, inside that smaller sphere. And when you have non-uniform densities that depends on radius, we have no choice but to go ahead and integrate the density times volume. Okay. Well, what, what's this little volume thing? That's the so-called volume element. Now I'm just going to go ahead and, and plug in this function that we have for our density. For a sphere, this volume element is uh, the surface area of that little sphere times the thickness of that little sphere. It's kind of like saying, what if we had to find the, the volume of rubber, or the amount of rubber that you have in a balloon? Okay, it, it's a thin shell, it has surface area, it has a tiny little thickness, and that would represent the volume of, of that thin shell of rubber. Now we want to integrate this from the center out to the Gaussian surface, out to little r. Okay, so if we look at this, um, we have some constants, 4 pi times whatever this a thing is. And let's see, we have r to the fourth power. Well, that we can do. It's a, a standard integral. And it looks like uh, that'll be, what, one-fifth r to the fifth power. So this will be the charge that we're going to use to find our field. Okay, so therefore, Gauss's law tells us the electric field is going to have a strength of uh, four fifths pi a r to the fifth power. We have to divide that by four pi little r squared, and then we have our epsilon. So it looks like the factor of four pi goes away. A factor of of little r squared goes away, and we're left with 
what's over? Uh, we have a five left over in our epsilon. Kind of a weird looking <laughs> electric field here. It varies as, as radius to the third power. But once we know the field, we can go ahead and figure out well what's going to happen to that electron that we hold right at the surface and drop into the tunnel. The force is the charged electron times this field that we place it in. And it's going to be, uh, it's an attractive force. It's going to be a negative. We have a positive sphere and a negative electron. And so uh, we just add that to the mix. And now we know the strength of the force acting on our electron. It's definitely going to pull it in. It's going to accelerate it at a tremendous rate because it goes as r cubed. And that force will be changing very rapidly as it falls in. Okay. Definitely a non-constant force. <laughs> okay. But now, how do you do speed? We want the speed of the electron, say when it gets to the center. Okay, well, uh, that's an interesting story. We can do it though. We can use energy. In particular, um, now that we know the electric field, okay, this thing, inside the, the sphere, we can find voltage. And in fact, we can find voltage differences between two points simply by integrating the electric field that you're moving through. And it's kind of a standard thing in electrostatics. So let's go ahead and, and plug in this electric field. We want to integrate this from the surface where we drop it in. Okay, whatever the voltage is there. Oops, I'm going to change that around. We're going to start at the surface and we want to figure out what's going on by the time it gets to the center. We have our field inside that we have to integrate. And let's go ahead and find that voltage difference because then we're going to say that uh, our change in potential energy as we fall in, since we'll be, we'll be losing potential energy, um, that change in that, that loss in potential energy is our gain in the kinetic energy, and that's not where we can get the speed from. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, we can go ahead, we can find this antiderivative. We have, again, constants. The uh, antiderivative of r cubed is 1 fourth r to the fourth power. When you plug in zero, that doesn't give you anything. So really, our change in potential energy is uh, this constant A times the radius of the sphere to the fourth power, all over 20 epsilon. That's our change in voltage. OK, so energy tells us um, that our, our change in potential energy is the charge electron times delta V. Okay. So that's going to be the charge times a constant, r to the fourth power over 20 epsilon. We want that, that loss in potential energy to be our gain in the kinetic energy of the electron. So we can go ahead and figure out what the speed is Uh, we have a factor of 2 times charge, a r to the fourth, all over 20 epsilon times the mass of the electron, and then we'd have to square root that. Okay? That's a, a funny looking answer, but that's not the point. The important part is we're combining lots of individual ideas together here, if you think about it. Uh, we're using Gauss's law to find the field. We, we have to integrate, we have this non-uniform density, we have to find the charge inside to do Gauss's law. Once we, that, once we know the electric field, we can find the force and the nature of the, the force on this electron. We can then use um, 
this e equation for voltage, we can find voltage difference and conservation of energy to ultimately figure out the speed of the electron at the center. Okay, so it's this weird mix of ideas. Uh, it's definitely doable. It it's a more complicated problem, obviously, but um, it, it's kind of a neat application of of some of, some of these topics that we've been studying and have figured out. So I hope this helps. Hope you find it interesting. And until next time, we'll see you later.